Good morning. We welcome you to worship today as we gather around the Lord's altar and all things to give praise to him. So we invite you to take out the red fellowship pad that can be found at the end of your aisle. So we just have a couple of announcements that we would share with you today. So the question I want to start off with is how many of you out there like city barbecue? Anyone like city barbecue? Do you like it when, when other people pay for city barbecue for you? Now that I have your attention is that we want to invite you next Sunday after our 1045 service is that we are having a free lunch, an opportunity for you to come and hear from our Wycliffe Bible Translator missionaries as they share not only of how God has been using them in the past, but how God is preparing them for their next adventures into the future. And so that is taking place right after services next week. RSVPs are definitely appreciated so we can plan to know how many people are there for us to be able to order food. Uh, but if not, is that you are welcome to just show up the day of. As our next announcement is that there's one thing that I often sometimes hear from our adult mentors in our confirmation classes. I sometimes hear them ask, Pastor, that was really interesting. How come they didn't teach that when I was in confirmation? And I usually ask that question of, is that, did they not teach it, or did you not just remember it? <laughs> is that, next week we start our foundation of faith class. This is, while it is certainly something that is aimed at people who are new to Calvary, people who are new uh, to looking into our ministry, this class is really going to be a great There we go. So anyways, is that next week we start our, our Foundations of Faith opportunity, as that is meant for those who are new to Calvary and there's ministries, but it is also an open invitation to those, whether you've been a part of Calvary for many years or not, is that it's an opportunity for us to study together God's core teachings and all that he has done for us, and it does provide that opportunity for those who are new to Calvary uh, to become a part of our congregation as that last week we had the opportunity for us to gather a door offering to support our India mission. That we're glad to celebrate that over, as that almost $1,200 was collected last week to help provide Tamil language Bibles and hymnals and biblical literature as that over in India uh, through our Tamil ministry, uh, ta uh, our overseas ministry. And so thank you so much for that. So today we do kick off our National Lutheran Schools Week as we celebrate the blessings that God is working in and through our congregation. And so today we celebrate all that he has given to us within our school connected to our congregation. But at this time I invite you to please stand and sing our opening hymn.
We make our beginning today in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come before you today acknowledging that we have not always lived as you desire. Though you have made us part of the body of Christ, we have too often acted out of selfishness or pride, determined to do things on our own. When we resist your will, we know that it causes pain within our relationships with you and with others. So lead us now into a humble confession of our mistakes. Renew us by your word of promise that we may not simply see our sin, but that we may more clearly see our sin. So we now go to God in song and confession. Psalm 103, David recounts the work of God, which is made complete in Jesus. It says, As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. In your confession, Jesus removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we invite the congregation to be seated as we invite forward the children of the congregation for our children's message. Well, good morning. It is great to see each of you guys here today. So glad to have you. Today, we are going to be talking about gifts. I see a smile out there. But we're not talking about the kind of gifts that you get for your birthday or Christmas or anything. Is that we are going to be talking about the gifts that God has given us of our talents, our abilities, those very blessings that are there. And so I brought something special with me to help us talk about our gifts today that I've brought with me. Do you know? Well, it's more right now just potato. 
but um, yes, is that I brought something with me today, is that right now it's just kind of a potato, but here's the thing, that in our reading that we're going to hear from in just a few moments, is that Paul says that each of us are a part of the body of Christ, that each of us have different gifts, different abilities to share that each of us are a part, and the fact is, is that is the body a body without its parts? Right now, it's just a potato, right? (laughs) But the fact is, is that God has given some of us, that He has given us that very ability to be those that listen to the very needs and cares and concerns of others. He's helped us to have those gifts of listening, that he's made some of us those who are those wonderful hands of Jesus as we serve and as we love and as we care for those in need, right? Is that he's given some of us that very, let me see if I can find it, that very fact of bringing that very joy of Jesus to others, right? To be able to bring smiles to one another's faces and to be that very wonderful gift. He gives some of us to be those eyes of Jesus that we can see where is God calling us to or where is he not? Where is God wanting us to go as a church that he gives some of us that? is that even he gives some of us that ability to smell out when teaching doesn't quite sound right, when things just don't seem. What's what's good and what's bad is that that's what he gives. So there we go. We got everything. We should be good. What happened? What's the problem? Legs. Oh, we don't need legs. He doesn't need, no, no. He's just fine. No, see, what else does Paul say today? Is that Paul says not only that each of us are a part of the body, but the fact is that we, unless we are all together, unless God has put us all together, that if there weren't children in the church, man, that would be not very fun, right? That if there weren't greeters there to welcome us, would we feel very welcomed? That if there weren't musicians in the church, how would our singing go? Probably not very well. That if there weren't pastors in the church, well, church would definitely be shorter. I can tell you that. Is that who would be able to tell God's word to us, right? So God has blessed each of us to be a part of that body of Jesus. And so the question that we have is how are you serving in God's church? And so let's go ahead and let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's pray. I invite you in the congregation to please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, we thank you for making us your own. You have chosen us with purpose. Help us to serve others. In your name. Amen. All right, you guys can head on back to your seats as we now hear that word of our very readings. As we now hear from our special readers from our Calvary Lutheran School as we turn to the word of our Lord. Our first reading is from the 12th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For just as one is body and has many members, all the members of the body, through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make no that will not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, I am not, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? If the, se- if the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? Because as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? This is the word of the Lord.
As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. There are many, there may be no division and all suffer together. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is from the fourth chapter of St. Luke. And Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the, to the blind, to, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the eyes of the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, is, it, is this not Joseph's son? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Said in our reading today is that Jesus came among his own people. And yet in the verses that follow, they refuse to receive him. It's that Jesus again comes to us today in his word inviting us to place our faith and trust in him. And so let us now joyfully continue in all of our confession of him as we respond to his fulfilling of every promise of scripture. And so we join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Congregation, maybe.
grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we direct our attention to the word of our Lord as found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as we hear and reflect about not only the question of value, but the question of calling. That today Jesus comes to us and desires for us to reflect not only about ourself personally, but out about us collectively. Because as we step into our reading today is that we come to that very fact that there is something that we must realize about the very people that Jesus, that, sorry, that Paul is writing to. That Paul is writing to the Corinthian Christians. These are those who live in a town that has been continuously growing in business and trade, a commercial place where in so many ways over the past years and decades in this town is that great wealth was, was gained and lost, that there were so many things that were happening and transpiring, that so many within this town were those that were giving of the goods and services and trading of ideas and everything else, that this was a place that was bustling, with all of the competitiveness of this place where people were trying to make a name for themselves. That they came to indeed make their fortune or they came to make their very name known. They came to this place to be those that would now begin to leave their past behind and now be known for what they could accomplish. I mean, just read 1 Corinthians sometime, and again and again, you will see the competitive spirit that just keeps coming out again and again, that bickering and fighting and arguing they did all over the place, always comparing, that always contrasting, always saying, how am I better than you, or how am I not good enough for that person, is that all of this, that they even compared who baptized them or who brought them to faith or who they followed or what teachings they believed or who they ate with or everything else that they continued to compete with one another. Is that that was the very problem at the very core of who they were as that very Christian church. That if I've learned anything about my last 20 or so years of TV watching, that reality TV, unfortunately, sometimes has far too much in, in connection with reality. Throw some people together and they are going to compete. Is that I know that so many of these shows have maybe come and gone, but the fact is, is that so many things continue to be that case is that week after week that we compare and contrast one another. We think who's the weakest link or we think who's the biggest loser or we think whatever else that there is. That the church and the world is one that is sometimes still filled with that very competition. And so Paul comes to speak to us today about that body, that God has made us all together one. That yes, there is unity and connection, and yet there is diversity and gifts. And so the question is, are we willing to allow both to still stand? Or do we expect that everybody should be like us, think like us, act like us, and and all things worship? like us? Or do we find ourselves in so many other ways, finding ourselves that we're independent spirits, we're going to do things our way, I don't care what others think? Or do we sometimes even allow competition to be something that gets in our way of constantly comparing? See, Paul first starts talking about some within the church who are saying, that they remove themselves from the very midst because they are not like somebody else. That either out of envy or out of shame, they now begin to say that because I'm not like so-and-so, that I just have nothing to offer. 
or they look at that person as someone that they wish that they could steal just a little bit of how God has gifted or how God has blessed them. And so again and again, we find ourselves comparing, living in envy and sh- or shame in ways that we say, who am I in the midst of this? But Paul speaks also of other Christians that sometimes find themselves on that complete other side of the spectrum. They aren't asking, who am I compared to such? But they are asking the question of, who are you? (laughs) And what do you bring to this? So Paul says that some would look down upon others or some would ask that very question, but again and again, he asks a deeper question, a question of value. Where do you get your value from? Where do you get your identity? Where do you get your sense of your name, your position within this competitive reality of this world that is? That is it your job? Is it your bank account? Is it your friendships or relationships or is it your family? Is it that fact that you are more gifted or more talented than others? Is that where is it that you seek your identity? Or do we find our standing, our place as those who are indeed united, all called together under one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one church, do we see that gospel news that God didn't just die for some of us? And God certainly didn't die for some of us a little more or a little less than he died for others. He said, no, Christ died for all of us to join us and unite us to be a people that is not all about competition and comparison, either knocking ourselves down or somehow puffing ourselves up. He calls all to come and find our place connected with one another. But the fact is, is that there is a problem at the very core of the church still today that there is a problem at the very core of who we are as modern Christians today. That is not simply a question of value and identity, it is a question of calling. A question of who has God called us to be. Now, first off, we recognize that competition is something that is just as much alive and well in our society today. So, I mean, I hear that there was like a basketball game or something earlier this week that people cared about. I don't, I don't know. They're like one team won by just a few points, the other team lost. Some people are really upset and other people are really happy and smiling. I hear that there's still some of that. So I'm talking about the Calvary Lutheran St. John's basketball game the other night. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you were thinking about something else. I don't, I don't know. But the fact is, The competition is alive and well. But there is something deeper that I think that the modern church is struggling with. Is that Christ has not only called us individually and said that you are valued and cherished and important, but Christ has called us collectively. He has made us a part of his very people. And he has called us to a larger purpose and a larger plan and to do greater things. But we in the modern church give up our calling for something that I might say is convenience. (laughs) That we live in a day and age that we are all about convenience and comfort and everything there. Is that the game is just not the game unless we have that nice sofa and all of the food and everything else. Is that it's not just a wonderful thing unless I can go ahead and with my voice turn on my lights and turn off my lights and all sorts of other things like that. I don't even have to use my thumbs anymore on my I just get to uh, talk to it, and it just does the stuff that I want. I mean, we live in a golden age, right? (laughs) But we live in an age that is all about what is convenient for me. What is more comfortable for me? 
And so when something's inconvenient, when something's hard or difficult, or when we find ourselves, I don't know, just not feeling up to it, that we find ourselves so often given up our calling, that God isn't simply interested in wanting part of us, that he wants all of us, that he did not just simply redeem us from something, saving us from our sins, is that God has redeemed us for us, for something, that he has indeed called us and saved us for our very sanctification, that we might grow as holier people with more passion, more love, with more caring for others. And so the question is this, In what parts of our lives are we giving up our calling for our convenience? Where is it that we are not rising to the challenge, but instead simply falling back into the comfort? That God is interested in you, not just you in a pew for an hour a week. That God is interested in you, Not just your views online when you manage or happen to get there. That God is concerned about having all of you because he was indeed concerned about all of you. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard this fable before, is that there's a story or fable told about the illustrious pig and hen conversation. So there was a pig and a hen who found themselves walking by the church one day, and they saw on the church sign is that ham and eggs breakfast. And the hen said, oh, that sounds like such a nice idea. That is a wonderful thing. The pig, needless to say, was absolutely upset. But why? You get to donate to the meal that I have to sacrifice for the meal. See, there's a difference between simply giving and sacrificing. That so many times that we might give out of what is convenient or comfortable, and I'm talking about all of ourselves. Do we give ourselves to our spouse, to our family? Do we give ourselves to our neighbors and our fellow Christians in that fullness? Or do we simply find ourselves so often easily settling with, I'm not going to ask that challenging question. I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not going to share the heartache and the hardship that I'm going through because I just don't think it would be worth it. So God invites us to give of ourselves. Not just when it's convenient or comfortable or when we have excess, but he invites us to that very sacrificial committing of ourselves to one another. Why? Because he committed himself fully to us. That Jesus knows of exactly what it took to sacrifice to make us his own. That Jesus didn't say, well, I'll get around to that cross thing when it's convenient. (laughs) No, that he was fully committed to making you his own. And not just you alone, but making us together his very people. And so at this time we turn to him, that he might work in our lives and change our very selves, that he might in all things grant to us that very gospel good news that we are valued and cherished and chosen for his very self. And that we are joined and united to be his people together. That may we go forth from this place as that body of Christ. And so I invite you to please pray with me. That Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have knit us together as the body of Christ. That though we so often try to assert our independence, we know that we are not islands unto ourselves. That I pray, O God, that you will continue to bless our church as we grow personally and collectively in your gifts each and every day. Send us out this morning changed by your gospel so that we can be the change in this world that we want to see. That it is in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. 
And so at this time in our services that we want to celebrate again. Last week we celebrated India Mission. This week we celebrate our Lutheran school. For God is not only giving us many blessings, is that God is working many blessings through us. We celebrate the fact that our school is not just a place for top-notch education, but it is a place where people can come and receive of God's gifts and His grace that we can find a community together. And so this week we are celebrating our National Lutheran Schools Week with churches and schools throughout the nation. And so at this time in our service, I would like to invite forward Arden Redding, a member of our Christian School Ministry team, and she would like to recognize some of our teachers and staff who are, um, are in, indeed um, celebrating anniversaries. And actually, I'm seeing that it's not Arden Redding, it's that they changed the script on me. Christina Davis, would you please go ahead and come forward? And those who are being recognized, if you can go ahead and please come forward as well. Good morning. Each year we recognize those that are celebrating five-year incremental anniversaries at Calvary Lutheran Church and School. This celebration is aptly held on National Lutheran School Sunday. This nationally proclaimed day reminds us that God indeed sends his people forth to teach his word to the nations. A flyer with, this li with the list of this year's celebrants and a little bit about them is included with this weekend's bulletin. We are blessed to have Al Royer, Brian Riley, Molly Trammell, and Karen Davis serving the Lord for five years at Calvary. Those serving 10 years are Chris Sabell, Jackie Hollenbaugh, and Jelana Rents. We are blessed to have Laura Wilkes, Cheryl Rensner, Dave Honebrink, and Kristen Springer celebrating 15 years at Calvary. Finally, Leslie Huntington marks her 20th year of service among us. We are rejoicing in God's provision as he supplies faithful servants to serve the people of Calvary and our surrounding community. Let us show our appreciation to these faithful servants. You are all invited to join us for a reception in the narthex following worship this morning as we express our thanks to these individuals. Thank you. So we thank you so much for your service and all things that God would continue to work through each of you and continue to raise up many servants, giving of themselves to bless our school and our church and our community. You may head back to your seats as we invite the congregation to please stand for prayer. Jesus invites us in his word. He says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So it's at this time that we respond to his gracious invitation. Jesus, bless all families and homes that one generation may tell the next of the wonderful works of God in Christ. Enlighten those who teach and those who learn at the many Lutheran schools of our church body that each school may be a blessing within its community. Unite us together within our mission and ministry as we keep your word of truth at the center of our lives together. Loving Lord, you have arranged us as members of one body in Christ Jesus. Free us from jealousy and contempt toward our fellow Christians. Help us to identify and to put to use our God-given talents, so that all may find their, their place of joyful service to Jesus and to one another. We ask that you would comfort those who mourn. We ask that you would uphold all who are sick, including Art Messner, Jennifer Kraft, and Steve Bruner, who are all recovering from surgery. We also pray for strength and healing for Aaron Wampner and Jerry Plummer and Carol Kettler, as well as for Kath Pontis, uh, Ponitz, um, who, these people who are uh, needing your strength and healing. We pray that you continue to be with them and lift them up and uh, be present within their lives and their situations. Gracious God, hear now, oh, excuse me. Gracious God, hear now the silent prayers and needs of your people from from, uh, from each person gathered here together as we go to God in a moment of silent prayer. Jesus, we lift up these prayers and whatever else may have gone unspoken this morning as we join together in the words that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Father, in this sacrament we have tasted and seen that you are good, filled with the saving grace and the perfect peace of our Savior. Send us forth to share what we have been given. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that our gracious Redeemer now sends us out with his words on our hearts and on our lips, is that we go with his blessing fully equipped for the week ahead. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>